Time for the breakdown, and who else are we going to bring? Got to bring down a former Bronco, Brandon Stokely. And Stoke, a lot of things went on in this game, but we have to talk about the most controversial play, the ejection of Philip Lindsay. Your thoughts on that play? Well, you know, you, you see him under the pile, and it's a scrum. A lot of stuff is going on. Somebody's pushing him, shoving him, and he's trying to get their hands off of him. I didn't think it warranted an ejection, but when you make that kind of action like Philip Lindsay did, you leave it in the ref's hands, and they decided to eject him. And it was a big, big play. Broncos have been relying on him so much in the running game and the passing game. He's been such an explosive player for him. To lose him that early in the football game definitely hurt them. Yeah, and it looked like the Broncos' offense also was stagnant after that as well, uh, losing Phillip Lindsay, And no other guys really stepped up. When that thing happened, who are some other guys that need to step up? Well, your quarterback does, and your offensive line does. And uh, offensive line-wise, just too many mistakes, too much pressure on Keenum. Keenum has to have better pocket awareness, and he can't throw that ball off his back foot like he threw in the red zone for that interception. That was really a costly turnover there. They had a chance to cut it to a one-score game and give themselves a chance to win, but after the interception and, and the bad decision by Keenum, now ball game is pretty much over. Well, with that, let's talk about Case Keenum today. Only threw for 192 yards and an interception, a big one in the fourth quarter. Evaluate this offense. What's going on with Case Keenum in offense? Everybody has to do a better job. Um, I thought the receivers bounced back after a bad game the week before. Offensive line needs to play better. Uh, but Case has got to, ha to have better pocket awareness. He's got to take care of the football better. Um, and if he doesn't do that, this offense is going to struggle like it did today. And that's a good Ravens defense that they were facing. I mean, those guys are and, and on the road and when they play at home and, and they do a lot of different things to confuse you. And uh, you got you to give them some credit, but also the offensive line and Case Keenum have got to play a lot better. Well, I'm glad you're talking about the offensive line. They struggled today as well. 13 penalties, 120 yards for the Broncos. And Garrett Bowles had a couple of holding penalties going up against Terrell. Sucks. You also had Connor McGovern with a couple of very tough penalties. The big one, I think, was um, Leary had a big uh, unnecessary yep. roughness penalty. I mean, the offensive line really struggled today. They did so well early on in the year. What can they do to improve? Well, too many mistakes. You, you can't make uh, those types of uh, mistakes and penalties that put you behind the sticks and now you're second and third and long and it's too hard to overcome those uh, mistakes on the road and that's what you saw with the Denver Broncos today they got to play cleaner football more attention to detail do the little things the right way and and on the road if you don't do the little things the right way you're not going to win against a good football team you know it's interesting we look at the defense now they gave up 20 parts 20 points in the first half and then only seven more after that a run by Buck Allen in the third quarter I felt they played pretty well but they did struggle covering tight ends and even the wide receivers they got open pretty much Joe Flacco with 270 yards today yeah Joe Flacco did a good job and the Ravens did a good job offensively you saw the the loss of Tremaine Brock I think really hurt them it put Isaac Yadam the young rookie in a tough spot covering some good wide receivers Baltimore's a good football team and defensively they gave up some plays but I thought they gave this football team a chance to win in the second half by only holding by giving up seven points and the offense didn't uh, do enough and, and uphold their end of the bargain there but I thought defensively they could do some things better uh, but I thought they did a, a, a decent job tonight. Okay, let's look forward. After three games, the Broncos are 2 and one still with the winning record, but they do take on the Kansas City Chiefs. And I think Pat Mahomes just on another touchdown pass. <laughs> what can the Broncos do next week to stop them on Monday night? Well, you can't make those mistakes that you made today. you got to play cleaner football. You're going to have to score a lot of points. I mean, Patrick Mahomes and the weapons that he has and the way that they're using him um, is special. I mean, he's off to an unbelievable start. So offensively, the Denver Broncos are going to have to uphold their end of the bargain and score points and keep their – keep the Kansas City Chiefs offense on the sideline. So it should be a good one. Monday night football, it's going to be exciting. I can't wait for it. You know, it's great. You, get a, you do get the loss. It does feel bad, but I tell you what, you get a chance to redeem yourself under the Monday night lights. Brandon, thank you so much for your time. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. All right.